So only recently in the channel, I reviewed Whiskey Lake U Mini PC. That was a Core i3 model. It did have support for dual channel RAM, which was great, but it lacked a little bit in terms of performance with only two cores. So I have with me now a bare bones mini PC that I got from banggood.com and this one has four cores. It's another Whiskey Lake U, but it has the Core i7, the 8565U. It does support up to two displays. I thought it might support up to three, but sadly in my testing, it's just two displays. The other mod I looked at was three, but overall this is a very decent mini PC, as you'll find out in this in-depth review. So if you are new to my channel or a frequent viewer and you haven't done so already, please subscribe, check the bell icon to enable notifications. This way you don't miss out on any new videos from me. So this is what you'll find in the box. There is no visa mount for some reason with my unit. I believe it is missing and should be included. So we get a user manual, HDMI cable, a cable, this is SATA 3, this one right here, with a connector for the motherboard. And our power supply, Delta Electronics, this is a known brand and it's 45 watts. And then we get a EU cable, this particular model here, and some rubber feet as well. So these rubber feet and some screws that we need to install a 2.5 inch hard drive. Now looking at the back of it first here, we have two 4K outs here. So this is 4K 60 Hertz from the HDMI 2 port and the display port. Now this Type-C port I was hoping could run a third monitor, but sadly with my unit here at least, I'm getting no video output out of this. We have two USB 3 ports, a gigabit LAN, and then that is our input there for power. And there are two screws currently missing. Those screws hold the lid in place. Then on the side you will find some plastic here. So these plastic strips are where the wireless antennas are located. This particular side here has the exit vent. So air comes in cool from the bottom and the other side that looks just like this and then vents right out here. And yes, fan noise is there and I'll give you a sample of it later on this video. It's probably the biggest con of this particular unit. And then the front of this mini PC, we have our power on, two status LEDs, 3.5 millimeter headphone jack with mic support, but there's actually no mic within this. So this little hole here, not just one status LED, but two of them, it actually is not a mic, which would have been good for Windows Cortana support. Two USB 2 ports and then two USB 3 ports. And then the bottom, you can see where the mounting bracket would go if it was included, that Visa bracket that I am missing with my particular package and intake along here. So this is where the cool air is gonna be sucked in. So that's why it's important, which I don't have on at the moment, is to put those four rubber feet on just to raise it up to give it a bit of ventilation, a bit of a gap underneath. Otherwise, it's only gonna be sucking in the cool air from the side. So this is a bare bones PC, and that means it does not include RAM, storage, operating system. Now you can install a 2.5 inch drive onto the inside of our alloy lid. So it's all made out of metal, all of this. It does have a very good build quality. You can see we don't have a lot of room in here, but they managed to squeeze in the two slots, SODIMM slots there for RAM. Now for RAM, I'm going with HyperX here. This is DDR4 and I'm see if I can put this in with my tripod in the way. So you just simply push it forward a little bit and then push it down. You'll hear a clip, a clip in place, and that means it's secured. Then put the other one in here. So this is 16 gigabytes, each one of these sticks. Complete overkill, I know. This is probably, I think, almost more than the price of this mini PC. But I couldn't find my eight gigabytes, so that's why I'm gonna run with 32 gigabytes. And also just to show you that it will run it. Now for the SSD, I have a Sabrent rocket right here. So this one is full PCI4 spec, which this slot should support which I'll be benchmarking this drive to make sure it is running at maximum speeds. I don't see why not. Now below it, there's a replaceable wireless card. It comes with the Intel AC3165 pre-installed, and that is not exactly a fast wireless card because the speeds of it max out at about 400 megabits per second. So without dropping this screw, hopefully, and with my tripod and everything in the way, let's see if I can try and screw this drive in. This is way harder than it looks when you've got uh, there we go. Anyway, I'm going to screw that in place and not put you through the misery of me trying to do that. I'll do it off camera without the tripod and all my gear in the way and get Windows 10 installed. So first up the BIOS. Now it is unlocked to us and we've got a lot of things that we can tweak and adjust, but they don't have any seating here for the power limits. But don't worry, we can use Intel's extreme tuning utility. You can use that to adjust power limits if you wanted to do so. You could also use uh, throttle stop too is another option. Now there is a setting in here that if it detects uh, the power off state, 
then when it powers back on, you can set it up that it will automatically power itself on. You're able to configure that, which is great. So if you wanted to use this as a server and you want to put it on a remote switch or you wanted it just to power up when it loses power, of course, then that is all possible. You've got then your boot options, of course, and just a few other settings that we can tweak, but nothing major. Now graphics, this one, you can give it a little bit more RAM, which I have actually done here. Now I know I'm running a crazy amount of RAM for this, 32 gigabytes of RAM, that's probably gonna cost more than the actual system itself and the SSD, but it's just to show you that it is possible and that you can run that 32 gigabytes if you wanted to do so. So let's get ourselves into Windows now. So I installed Windows 10 Pro. Uh, you do happen to have a CD key of that one, so that's why I went with that particular version. And it was very fast to install it. Now, when you go into Windows Update and just run everything to try and get all the drivers for this particular unit here, it will pull through everything, okay? Including that wireless AC3165 that's on board. Now, I did put the AX200 in there, so I didn't have a driver for it. And I just had to connect up to uh, another wireless card in order to get that and download and get the drivers, but you shouldn't have any problems. Now, if you install Linux, Linux is gonna run on this thing absolutely fine, no problems. In fact, it really flies on this. It is very, very quick with that, which is good to see. Now, under the processor, of course, you'll see that it shows up eight times because we have eight threads here. The maximum turbo is 4.6. This is a tweak of the Core i7, the 8550, with this Whiskey Lake U from the KB Lake R. So they just boosted up the clock speeds really. Now, when you have a look at the temperatures, I've been doing some stress testing a little bit here that it normally is actually quite good. So it won't go over about, the highest I've seen it get up to is about 86 degrees, but there is a little bit of fan noise. There'll be a sample later on that that's just the trade off there that the thermals are good. In fact, when you touch it as well, it doesn't get that hot, but bit of fan noise. The good thing is though, when it is idle, or not doing anything too demanding, the fan turns off completely, if it can, that is. Now you're able to adjust if you wanted to here to give it a bit of a tweak in power limits, because you see this is probably flashing right here, that's the power limit throttling on and off and current limit throttling. So if you increase this one here to 45, I've noticed that it will still run well, and of course you can undervolt a little bit there if you wanted to do so. In fact, I do recommend it. It does a boost the performance, increasing the turbo speeds just a little to help there. So a couple of benchmarks that I did run here, we've got Geekbench 5, and you can see that's actually not a bad score there. I'm just gonna test out that Sabrent two terabyte drive here as well in the background. So I just get that benchmarking away, have a look on the speeds there. And here is Geekbench 4. So that's a very good score. This is not bad at all. This is so much quicker than the previous Whiskey Lake U that I looked at that had the Core i3 in it. And that, of course, only had two cores and four threads in total. So this one, multi-core score there, is not actually bad at all. So it's really no slouch when it comes to just your general computing. This thing is very fast. Apart from gaming, which you'll see later on, it's not really good at because of the integrated GPU that this has, of course. We need a dedicated one. So in your spreadsheets and things like that, it's just super quick. Even a really large one like this. This is 859 pages, this one. Just so quick. No problems at all for it. This is not gonna stress out the CPU. Spreadsheets as well, this is uh, LibreOffice that I'm using, no problems. Even this one with 700 entries in here, that's not gonna be a problem. I don't really need to show this kind of thing here, but I will. I won't show you Chrome performance because again, it is really, really quick. And because I've got a lot of RAM there, I can have huge amounts of uh, tabs open in the background. So what about video performance? We'll take a look at that too as well under some demo clips I've got here that if you're gonna be running Kodi, which I happen to have, that it plays everything flawlessly, really good. We've got that native decoding of VP9 codecs and HEVC. So here is a very demanding 140 uh, megabit per second 4K 10-bit clip. Run this and you'll see that it takes a little while to show up. But once it gets going, it is very smooth. Okay, so there's a few little seconds there were a bit of lag and then it's now smooth, that's running fine, okay? And if you use Kodi, Kodi will play it even better. Super smooth there. So this is an overkill for a media playback machine that you connect up to a TV. Great for 4K because we do have 4K60. The output I have tested, no problem. So 4K60 from the display port, 4K60 from the HDMI 2.0A port. And look at this, this is a 60 frames per second file, 4K. No issues with this. Really, really good. Not a problem. So it is 
as mentioned, just an overkill really for those kind of files and playback. So let's have a look at our drive speeds. Okay, so that's got just a little while to go there. So that is definitely running at the full PCIe times four. This Sabrent drive here, the slot at least, and really good as you can see there so far. But we'll take a look at what the right speeds are. Okay, so that's just finished up. You can see over 3000 megabytes per second there for the sequential writes. That is really, really quick and very good random 4K reads and writes there as well. And I also did run Cinebench if you're interested in this score. So almost 700 CB is not bad at all, but this was with me under vaulting a little bit and just tweaking up that power limit, okay? Otherwise the score will be quite a bit lower, about 100 CB less than this one. And then OpenGL score, 54 frames per second. Not that that really matters here, but let's have a look also at R20. So R20, we get almost 1600 points there. Again, not actually a bad score for this particular CPU. Now onto 4K video. So I'm just about to test this right here. My connection speed at home is only 4G that I'm using, but it should be able to keep up with, as you can see right there, connection speed seems to be okay. Network activity, but the buffer health is a little low. Now it's starting to build up. Okay, so I'm just gonna hit full screen on this one. A Little bit of lag there. And for some reason that's, oh, I haven't hit play. So that helps if you hit play. There we go. So 4K streaming via YouTube here is smooth. This can handle this particular CPU, this kind of task with absolute ease, even if you've only got four gigabytes or eight gigabytes of RAM installed in it. And then a more demanding task, which is editing 4K video. So this is one of my old reviews that uh, I've got some sample files here that I like to test out. So when you're scrubby head, the preview window right here, this is set to full by the way, is keeping up just fine. Now the clips, all that I've got in here, we've got about 10 minutes. So it's like a 10 minute review, playback as well. For this review, that is fine. There's no noticeable lag here. Now, of course, the quantity of RAM that I've got in here is definitely going to be helping with this, especially if you've got large edits, because Adobe Premiere Pro, this one likes to eat RAM. But we'll take a look now at the export speeds. I'm going to export this one at the YouTube 4K preset, and we'll see how long one minute of footage I will take. So I have one minute and 24 seconds, or milliseconds there actually of footage. And you can see I do have it set to YouTube, the 4K Ultra HD preset, and we do have hardware encoding. So this means it's gonna be a lot faster. So I'm gonna hit play right here and then export. We'll see how long it takes. All right, so it's just about to finish. Soon as that disappears, the box, because normally, there we go. So one minute and 18 seconds for one minute of footage. That is probably actually one of the fastest times I have seen, especially for this Whiskey Lake U processor. So that's very good. Now, if you do really complex edits, when you start adding a lot of different 4K files, effects, transitions, it will start to slow down a little bit. If you happen to edit a very large video, I'm talking over 10 minutes, like 20 minutes, that's when you do really actually need a dedicated GPU for this one, I feel. So this is Grand Theft Auto 5, probably needs no introduction, most people should know what this game is unless you've been living under a rock. So this is uh, 720p, 1080p is just too choppy, it's about 30 lower to mid 20 kind of frames per second, but here it is playable which is good. Now I did apply a bit of an undervolt which is 0 0.75 volts and that's what I've undervolted on the CPU. And also on the GPU as well, and this I think has helped just increase the clock rate a little bit. But the CPU is not really being stressed too much here. You can see it's only at about 36%. So it is good to see that a more demanding game like this one is going to have at least what I would call kind of playable frame rate here. Just, well, scraping just then over 30 frames per second. But most of the time it is in the 40s, sometimes up in the 60s as well, which to me is still playable here. I mean, in a perfect world, it would be a solid 60 frames per second, of course, but this hardware just cannot do 720p 60, solid 60. So CSGO here is normally over about 60 frames per second, but when you get into the smoke, as you can see, it dips down to about 45, a little bit lower there. I'm just going to see if I can grab someone's gun, as I've got no gun here. And whoops, probably won't last too long here. Right, I don't need to inspect my weapon. Ah, oh, there you go, he would have got me. The main thing is though, the frame rate is actually pretty steady apart from the smoke. You will get the occasional little dip, but it is very smooth for integrated that is at 1080p.
So the biggest con of this particular mini PC is the fan noise. It's now at 100% because I'm stressing it out running Cinebench uh, 20 here. So here's a sample of what you can expect at 100% low, that's full RPM on that little tiny fan that's inside there. Now I did set the power limit to 45 watts up from 25 watts and it will get up to this right here, 90 degrees C then, which is actually not too bad considering we're adding 20 more watts to the power consumption that it can actually use up. However, it does trigger this right here. You can see thermal throttling did take place and that will happen once, once it goes over about 86 degrees, it will thermal throttle here just to keep those temperatures from exceeding 90 that I got. And of course it does lower the clocks down a little bit. Okay, so let me recap here. So the size of this thing, I think it does pack quite a bit of performance. We've got the quad cores, eight threads in total, and it is very good there. We've got the NVMe drive support. It also supports SATA 3, so it's a combo slot there, M.2. Now we don't sadly have three monitor support with this one. Now I thought the Type-C port might support uh, video out, 4K 30 hertz or 60 hertz, but no, not there at all. I would have preferred to have, of course, Thunderbolt 3 on this, but that really would have pushed the price up. Speaking of price, with a coupon, this comes out to be 299 US dollars, but you need to factor in that this is a bare bones system. So you need to add your RAM, your operating system, and an SSD. 2.5 inch drive support, as shown, is good to have on this. And really, it does pack a lot. What does impress me, uh, the temperatures, okay? So thermals are good, and touching it, it'll be running days on end. I've had it running for a couple of days nonstop and it will just be nice and cool to the touch. And when it's idle, the fan goes off completely. So it doesn't just stay on a low setting sucking up dust. It stops completely, no sucking up dust then when it's not on at least. But when it is under low, that's probably just the only really con with this machine really, apart from not having Thunderbolt 3, is that it does have a bit of fan noise when pushed quite hard. So that's just one thing there. If you're really sensitive to fan noise, you don't like a, an annoying kind of fan, it's not super annoying. I mean, it's bearable, but you will definitely hear it's audible, the fan that's in here. And yes, to you AMD guys in the comments, I know you're probably saying Ryzen 7 4000 series. Where are your reviews of those models? Well, I haven't seen any yet. And when I can review one, I will actually, I have plans. I'm in discussions with uh, a couple of, uh, hopefully some brands are gonna send out review units to me on a couple of AMD Power Mini PCs. So they will be coming in the channel, don't worry. I'm not just Intel only. I mean, I don't care about the Intel AMD battles, whatever, because that Ryzen 7 4000 does look super promising. But this is actually really quite a good Intel powered mini PC if you like your Intel tech. And thank you so much for watching this and see you back in the next one.